this as well. This is a kind of, I think my last topic for the day and then I'm going to move on. But this is a really heartbreaking update to kind of provide because I've been a fan of this guy ever since I sort of stumbled upon him. I'm going to say maybe a little bit before the pandemic, I kind of stumbled upon him um, and his DJ and his production and whatnot. And essentially his movement that he was kind of creating with his label and the, the group of artists that he was sort of like working with at the time and DJs and whatnot. I was a real big fan of the guy at that time. And to see his sort of like ascent and him being somewhat relatively under unknown and then becoming a fucking big star. It was fucking incredible to see. But this update absolutely broke my heart. This is courtesy of Instagram and the account of Michael Bibby. Michael Bibby has let the world know that he has been diagnosed with a very, very rare form of cancer. And he's currently in recovery, um, but he's going to be taking some time away, of course, um, to kind of get himself right. The caption says as follows, courtesy of Michael underscore Bibby underscore on Instagram. Hello world, writing this post is a hard one. Last week, I was diagnosed with CNS lymphoma, a very rare cancer that affects the brain and the spine. Unfortunately, it's moving fast and I have to stay in hospital, starting treatment immediately. Typing this message doesn't quite seem real and I'm sorry for the bad news. I don't know what lies ahead. I'm tired, but I know I'm strong and I won't let this beat me. I'll be back stronger for you all. Love, Bibi. And if you don't know who Michael Bibby is, he is obviously a very well-known um, DJ who mostly plays like, I would say, uh, tech house and house music, but a very, very well-known DJ in his field. And, you know, incredibly young, really kind of still going for it, still creating his own legend in real time, but somebody very, very popular in his kind of genre of music. And, you know, just, yeah, just caught me off guard as well, because like I said, I've been following his career since, I guess, just before the pandemic and part of his kind of whole persona and vibe was the fact that he was the kind of guy that you would have maybe bumped into on the dance floor somewhere and he kind of made good which is the kind of the perfect story of success for everybody right that wants to be a dj you sort of like start off i know for myself anyway why i'm currently pursuing a career in djing is that you start off being somebody who just loves the music you go out you're a raver you're attending parties you're you know um, cultivating um, a community around you connecting with people understanding what stuff that you're into cultivating your own sound working to be whatever you just start off being a raven and you get into it and then you kind of decide oh wow i can do other things involved in it. i can put on my own events i can become a dj i can be a producer blah, blah 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 but it always starts off from the dance floor so when you see somebody make it who kind of looks like you has a similar sort of vibe maybe comes from the same similar sort of place had the same sort of story it kind of fills you with some bit of joy a little, little, little bit right like oh sick he could he did it i can do it too and honestly michael baby's kind of blow up over the last fucking 10 years has been incredible to watch him go from like zero to one million over such a short period of time 10 years obviously isn't short but still he's been crafting and doing his thing but this really kind of caught me like off guard because i didn't know this was a thing but having checked other DJs that he's kind of you know label mates with and friends with and collaborators with one being Pauser he was already tweeting about you know Michael Bibby and having prayers for him since early May so this has been the issue for a while um it's just sad really because this guy's relentless he's always touring he's working hard he parties hard he plays hard like he's legitimately one of those type of dudes so to have this happening at the peak of his career it's not even a peak actually he's just stuck getting started man he has a long way to go must be so so upsetting and for me looking at it just from my kind of angle and things i've spoken about before with my kind of love for electronic music and my love for djing and me pursuing my own career in djing and just being a part of the scene and going out to parties and stuff i've had a really hard time honestly actually more than i would care to admit trying to come to grips with the fact that i have to change a huge part of how I kind of go outside and how I rave, how I party and having to change a huge part of my personality in the process. Because I think oddly enough, maybe a huge part of my personality that I never really admitted was the fact that I was the party boy. I was the one always getting on it. I was the one always pushing the limits. I was the one always at all the parties. I was the one that was staying until the end, going to the afters, being a good vibes. And I was thinking about it just now earlier. I was kind of weirdly enough proud of myself on always being like 
oh yeah that's the guy you know like it's the guy he's here he's gonna have a big baggy on him he's gonna have extra drugs he's gonna have this he's gonna have that he's gonna be good fun he's gonna have good chat he's gonna be funny like i prided myself on being like that that guy which is incredibly lame incredibly redacted and kind of embarrassing but when you don't have many hobbies unfortunately as an adult and one part of your hobby includes going out at night and meeting other adults and listening to cool music and dancing it can sound pretty fulfilling and somewhat gratifying that this is a part of your life that you've got that allowed you to meet different people travel the world listen to amazing music and have fun it's quite cool but obviously the pandemic happens everything kind of stops you know my kind of tempo kind of wanes a little bit um and you know things kind of change in terms of my ability to maybe do the stuff that I used to do and also my interest and stuff also change my tolerance level change in terms of what I'm able to accept from people around me I start to realize you know what maybe I'm just not that guy anymore and I have to change that part of my life but it was a huge part of my life for a long time because I was promoting parties I was DJing um I was attending events. There was a period in my life where I was a club photographer. Like, believe that or not, I was legitimately taking pictures in club nights for people and shit and getting paid. Sometimes just getting free guest lists and getting free drinks and shit or free drugs. So nightlife and dance music and electronic music and DJ culture, all that shit and clubs has been a huge part of my life. And coming from a very conservative, somewhat, you can't do this, you can't do that sort of family, having that sort of outlet when I was a kid to kind of go out and find myself was really important and framed a huge part of my life and actually made me who I am, which is sounds cringy and honestly so lame. I know it's saying this out loud, but last for the last couple of years, I had to kind of come to grips with like, you know what? I have to change things because I can't keep this up. Like I'm not the same guy anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. It's taking me too long to recover. I'm not having as much fun as I was before. I'd rather do it like once or twice a year, if that. And I just need to kind of approach it differently. So it's been difficult to kind of come to grips with. And um, in this case with Michael Bibby, I'd imagine he's probably the same, if not even more because you know he's a worldwide well-known super successful famous dj he probably gets to indulge in anything that he wants and then out of the blue you have a health scare and it completely changes everything you know because no one's sitting here saying oh it might be his lifestyle that contributes we don't know i'm not going to start to cast aspersions on that one this could just be bad luck we don't know but it must be so if i was having a real you know cope session and midlife crisis with, with my emotions imagine how you must feel you're doing your your thing you're this well-known dj you have like 300 plus gigs a year or something crazy right and then whew, it just shifts you go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and it's just something that you can't control he has i guess loads of money i'd imagine right he's a very successful very popular dj but none of that can actually help you in this case it's just kind of weird luck of the draw. And you just have to kind of hope and pray that things kind of get better and you can kind of fight this. Even though he said in his own words that this um, version of cancer, CNS lymphoma, is very rare. And also it's affecting a place like the brain and the spine, which I'd imagine are hard places to treat. So how do you kind of like you know, you know what I mean? It's just a difficult thing to kind of come to grips with, but you're just praying and hoping for the best and hoping he stays strong, is able to kind of battle and fight through this because this must be such a shock. And I don't know, for me, watching this was kind of hard to see, but also it kind of made me kind of, you know, it kind of made me kind of be like, you know what? Like, suck it up, I guess, you know. Stop being a fucking baby. Oh, boo-hoo, you can't go out as much. Boo-hoo, you can't go and get on this much. Boo-hoo, it takes you 10 days to fucking recover um, after a fucking night out you know but at least you are able to make that decision now it's not like the party is telling you to leave you're actually actively saying hey i'm stepping away nothing catastrophically bad has happened it's just me just saying you know what um i'm done with this sort of thing and i'm gonna do it another way so um in this case i think this is a very good cautionary tale and also more so than heads up for both people to just you know try to focus on their health as much as they can do and have some sort of balance but i'm also very aware that this could also just be a case of just really unfortunate bad luck 
where it had nothing to do with his lifestyle, nothing whatsoever. It just happened out of the blue. And now he has to kind of deal with this whole new reality when just the other week, just a couple of months ago, he was somewhere in some warm, sunny beach and some big festival, his arms out wide, having a great time. And now it all kind of changes. So it can be a bummer, but I'm hoping he gets better soon. Hoping this isn't something that is going to be, um, you know, uh, you know, in that way. And I hope he's been able to kind of recover and bounce back from this in any way that he can. Um, but yeah, this just caught me off guard. I was like, fuck, man. Fuck, 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 fuck. Um, and the guy's super young as well, has his whole entire life ahead of him. So it's just a really unfortunate kind of, you know, um, situation that's kind of occurring here in real time. But it's been nice to see the outpouring of support. This is just a screenshot that I obviously have saved here. But if you go on his actual Instagram, there's like, you know, I think last time I checked, there was like, I don't know, I think like 20,000 comments. I, I kid you not. Already this one has like a half a million likes. Like loads of people from the community are already pouring their support in, into him. You know, giving him words of encouragement. I'm sure there are people within the scene who have also had direct experience with people that have suffered from the same diagnosis. Giving him maybe words of encouragement, support, advice, recommendations, whatever. So it's nice to see. And I imagine a lot of those people are also people that didn't probably like him. Right, they probably thought he was lame or corny or represented the bad side of music or you know business techno side of things. But they're all kind of banding together and saying, "Nah, man, we need to kind of give this guy our love and support from afar, and kind of hope that that can kind of contribute um to his overall recovery." So again, on my end, I can only extend my thoughts and prayers out to Michael Bibby. Hope he does make a speedy recovery and he's able to overcome this huge hurdle in life. And I also hope that this is a wake up call for a lot of people out there um myself included to you know focus on your health a lot especially if you're somebody that is involved in dance music is involved in nightlife to kind of have a some level of balance or to maybe decide when you need to decide that you need to hang it up and whatnot because sometimes um this sort of lifestyle and going the way that these guys are going and um, doing the things that they're doing at that kind of pace maybe isn't that kind of you know um isn't that sustainable maybe maybe that's the case but you know what what do i know what do I know?